Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for choosing Across the Fence. I'm Will Michael, in for Fran Stoddard. The University of Vermont now ranks among the top 100 public research universities in the country, according to data released earlier this year by the National Science Foundation. The financial impact of UVM's national research ranking is now nearing $200 million a year. Undergraduate students are also engaged at research at UVM, and at the school's recent student research conference, some of the student work focused specifically on Vermont issues, including a student working in exercise science. My name is Riley Coronan, and I am a senior student studying exercise science in UVM's College of Nursing and Health Sciences. I had a desire for my senior capstone project to really show what I've been doing for the past four years in exercise science. I researched the acceptability and feasibility of Nordic walking for a cohort of Vermont's older adults. Tell us about Nordic walking. What is it and how did you learn about it? Sure, so Nordic walking is similar to conventional hiking with the addition of two handheld poles which offer four points of contact with the ground instead of the two that you would get from just your feet. This also offers a wider base of support, which is a wonderful thing when you're working with a population who may be experiencing age-related declines in muscular strength or balance. And, and is that why this applies and that's why it's important because you're dealing with, this is a real solution potentially. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I mean, one of my goals was to choose an activity that older people would be able to do and enjoy and not feel like they were being babied or like it had to be super modified in order for it to be safe for everyone to participate. I was also really inspired by my grandparents who are avid hikers well into their 70s and use their poles to get up mountains at home. So, Riley, to do this research, what did you have to do? <laughs> I sent a lot of emails trying to find someone who would be willing to mentor me. And then it kind of hit a point where it's like, oh, oh snap, I'm going to be doing this. Like I posted an ad on Front Porch Forum, not expecting much. And all of a sudden I'm having dinner with my roommates and my phone's just ringing and ringing. And I'm like, hello, like I read through this whole questionnaire and we have a cohort of 10, which is about all I had the funding for, to be honest. It was a very easy recruiting process. So it kind of tells you too that you're on to something. Oh, absolutely. I would love to see other people run with what I started. No pun intended. No pun absolutely intended. I was excited also to get to do this because there's definitely a gap in what I know as a 22-year-old exercise science student as far as programming appropriately for older populations, and I definitely want to graduate having more confidence in that area. It's out there. Like, the benefits both physically and mentally of exercise just cannot be overstated and if you're looking to do something off the beaten path this is a great way to get started i would love to see you out there on some of those trails the population of the world is just getting older as we experience the birth of new medicine and technology that allow us to live for longer and we need the relevant infrastructure and supports to make sure that quality of life can be maintained well into your 70s, 80s, 90s, 100s. Like the, the trend is going up and we need to meet that. I was really grateful for this opportunity for the people who decided to go out on a limb and participate in this college student senior project as well as for the mentorship that I received from people in the College of Nursing and Health Sciences, specifically Drs. Sue Kasser and Elizabeth Harding. Thank you so much, folks. Our congratulations to Riley and a quick note that will feature more UVM students and their research on Vermont in upcoming programs. Lake Champlain is the state's largest body of water, which we share with the state of New York and the province of Quebec. Even if you don't live on the lake, a majority of us live in the lake basin, which means everything that runs off the land ends up in the lake. 
To learn more about the lake, we've partnered with UVM's Lake Champlain Sea Grant Institute to create a series of educational videos. And one of the videos tracks the lake's history, including its formation. Lake Champlain is an extraordinary natural resource nestled between New York, Vermont, and Quebec. But the lake and its tributaries are being negatively affected by human activities on the land. Lake Champlain Sea Grant works to develop and share science-based information to improve the environment and economy of the Lake Champlain Basin. Lake Champlain is a key feature of the Vermont, New York, and Quebec landscape. The lake has a rich natural history and has served as a hub for recreation and tourism. If you look at an aerial shot of the Lake Champlain Basin, you can see the long and narrow shape. How is Lake Champlain formed? In addition to the long and narrow shape of Lake Champlain, you'll notice the Adirondack and Green Mountains, which form the watershed boundary on the eastern and western side of the lake. These mountain ranges were formed from tectonic plate movements that happened 500 million years ago for the Green Mountains and 100 million years ago for the Adirondack Mountains. The shape of the lake is derived from glacial forces that began to carve out the landscape during the Pleistocene age, roughly two and a half million years ago. The rocks and landforms of the Lake Champlain Valley are a geologist's dream. What are some of the geologic highlights of the Lake Champlain Basin? One of the top places I'd recommend checking out to view this region's unique and rich geologic history is Fiskori. Fiskori is located in Isle Lamont, Vermont, and is a great place to see one of the world's oldest coral reefs. It's remnants of the ancient Iapetus Ocean, which would have covered this region 500 million years ago. Another site that I'd recommend is the Champlain Thrust. This site is located off of Lone Rock Point in Burlington and is viewed best by boat. This site shows an exposed thrust fault which runs 200 miles from southern Quebec all the way down to the Catskills region of New York. What makes this site so unique is that you're able to view a low angle exposed thrust fault. This thrust fault actually shows where you have older rock which is pressed on top of younger rock. This is a really unique geologic feature. In this case, rocks of the Cambrian period about 500 million years ago have been pushed up and onto rocks of the later, younger Ordovician period about 450 million years ago. Lastly, I'd recommend stopping by the University of Vermont Perkins Museum of Geology. There you can view the skeleton of a 10,000 year old beluga whale. This whale was exhumed from Charlotte, Vermont and is a remnant of the Champlain Sea. Prior to the lake we see today, this area was also home to two other water bodies. The first was Lake Vermont roughly 20,000 years ago. The first freshwater body to form as the glaciers retreated north. The immense weight of the glacier's thick ice, however, depressed the land to such a degree that it allowed seawater to flow in through the St. Lawrence and Richelieu River, which slowly created the saltwater Champlain Sea around 13,000 years ago. As the glaciers again retreated, the land rebounded. This caused the water flow to reverse back to what they do today, flowing north, gradually shifting Lake Champlain back to the freshwater lake by about 9,000 years ago. Today, Lake Champlain is 120 miles long and 12 miles wide at its widest point. It is 400 feet deep at its deepest point, which bears significant ecological importance. This great depth allows for cold, oxygen-rich water to settle at the bottom of the lake throughout the summer months and provides great habitat for a variety of aquatic organisms. When we think of Lake Champlain, we tend to think of it as one ecosystem, but the lake is actually divided into five distinct regions, and those regions have unique physical, chemical, and biological properties. The segments of the lake include the main lake, the south lake, the northeast arm, Mallets Bay, and Missisquoi Bay. The main lake is the largest, deepest, and coldest portion of the lake. Nutrient concentrations are relatively low in this segment as well. The main lake thermally stratifies throughout the spring and summer months and is home to many cold and warm water fish species, most notably lake trout. This section provides high quality drinking water, 
and is home to the greatest number of shipwreck sites on Lake Champlain. The Northeast Arm and Missisquoi Bay are shallower by comparison to the main lake. These sections struggle with warm weather cyanobacteria blooms due in part to elevated phosphorus concentrations. The Northeast Arm has a strong fishery and is popular among anglers. Additionally, this region is home to several waterfront Vermont state parks, including Kilcare and Burton Island. The South Lake segment is shallow and narrow. Phosphorus concentrations fluctuate and much of the phosphorus enters the lake through tributaries. The South Lake has a great warm water fishery, particularly bass and northern pike. Mallets Bay has the lowest phosphorus concentrations in the lake and is known for having overall clean water. The bay is home to the sandbar wetlands that recently earned a class one wetland certification, the highest level of protection. The Lake Champlain Basin is 19 times larger than the lake itself. This means that the land to water ratio is 19 to one. This is actually three to four times greater than that of the Great Lakes. This truly amplifies the impact of land use management and water quality. This high ratio land draining into a relatively small volume of water means that pollution in the runoff is concentrated by the time it reaches the lake from different regions of the watershed. Today, the water quality challenges we face are from non-point source pollutants. Non-point source pollution is spread out, not linked to one specific place, and includes sources such as residential and commercial areas, urban settings, farmlands, parking lots, roads, and from stream bank erosion. The lake is also a vital resource for the communities and economies of the Lake Champlain Basin providing ample sites for recreation on the water, as well as a niche for the Vermont tourism industry. The basin is fortunate to have many public sites where individuals can access and enjoy the lake, from state parks and boat launches to local marinas and community sailing centers. Lake Champlain is a natural treasure. We all have a part to play in protecting it and the waters that drain to it, now and into the future. This video was produced by Lake Champlain Sea Grant, a partnership among the University of Vermont, SUNY Plattsburgh, and the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. To learn more about Lake Champlain Sea Grant and to see other videos in this series, please visit our website. And that is our program for today. We know you have choices, so thanks for choosing us. I'm Will Michael, inviting you to join us back here each weekday afternoon for another visit across the fence. <laughs>